Welcome to module four of C-sharp looping. Today, we're going to speak about for loops. In the last couple of modules, we spoke about while and do while, and those are pretty easy to go over. So hopefully this one's as easy as the last. If you've liked this entire series, please like and subscribe. It really helps a lot to uh, let me know what content you guys want to see. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the for statement. The for statement is one of the most widely used iterations or iterative statements in all of programming. And it executes a statement or a block of statements based on a series of sentinel values, not just one, but a series. And when I say a series, it you can theoretically tell it you want it to look for multiple sentinel values um, within the, the, the Boolean expression of the for loop. I would like to let you know that most languages, both scripting and high level, have for loop as the base looping structure of all the loops you will ever see. So there are a few conditions or elements that we need to take into consideration with the for loop. So as you saw in the while loop, if you haven't seen that uh, lecture, please go back a few in this playlist and you should see it. But if you look at the actual uh, while loop, we had to initialize a variable called counter that did our counting for us. And, and, and that wasn't, you know, uh, that wasn't feasible, right? It's something that if it was baked into the actual structure, it would make life a lot easier. So there are a couple of things that were that is baked into the for loop structure. And there are three specific parameters that are required to ensure that your for loop works as desired. The first thing is you want to have an initializer. You want to initialize the for loop, right? So you want to declare a variable within your parameter that has a specific assigned value that you may count on. Normally this is called your iterator, okay? You also need your condition. Your condition is the Boolean expression as you saw in our while loop. Now with for loops, we don't use true. That's a while loop expression because we want to ensure that our Boolean expressions, our sentinel values are very targeted. And normally our while loops will have multiple exit conditions that we want to take into consideration when we push those things forward, okay? The, and, uh, the third thing that we actually look for in for statements is an iterator. Now, what your iterator does is it iterates the initialized variable. It iterates the initialized variable. So the first parameter is the initializer. The second parameter is the condition by which we would like the iterations to stop, okay? So if it evaluates to true, then we want it to stop. Otherwise, if it's evaluated to false, uh, we want to keep going. So, or, or I'm sorry, it's the other way around. If it evaluates to true, keep going. If it evaluates to false, stop, right? So if, you know, if I is greater than five, stop, right? Or as long as I is less than five, right? As long as I is less than five. Four loops are kind of interesting in that respect. And then you have an iterator. Normally it's like I plus plus or something along those lines to get that initialized variable to increment by one or decrement by one, depending on how your loop is working. And then the body of the loop itself. So this is some more information about the iterator section that gives us information about how we can iterate. I have iterated up, I have decremented down, or decremented down. It, it, it depends on what you're trying to do at that moment in time. Now, we're done. So let's jump to the code. So we're in the code. I'm going to stop debugging for a second, and I'm going to convert this to a for loop. With that being said, there's some things that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to get rid of the counter because, well, you know what? We don't need that there. I am also going to get rid of this at line eight. And we're going to change the do and the while and the counter. We don't need any. We do not need any of that. None of that's required. So now we're just going to write our for loop. So we're going to start with the name for. We're going to open up the braces. And then we're going to start with our first parameter. Our first parameter is the initialized variable that we want to use initialized to a specific integer, okay? Normally your iterator is in integer format and this is what we want. Now, notice the program is trying to finish this for me. This is a wonderful feature of C Sharp or a wonderful feature of Visual Studio. It's IntelliSense. And what's interesting is IntelliSense is now being uh, upgraded to something called CodePilot, which is AI-based IntelliSense. If you don't know what that is, please look it up. It's great stuff. Either way, I am not necessarily gonna press tab. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna stop and make something to iterate over. 
I haven't made anything to iterate over. I need to iterate over something, or at the very least, I need to have a number that I want to get to. I actually can do this this way first, first actually. So for i equals zero, I can say um, i is less than four or five, while i plus plus. We're gonna we're gonna reprogram the way it was, okay? And then let's run it. So we're gonna run this. All right. We're back into the we're back into the program. We have our iterator here. We're gonna iterate into the program. I is zero. You can see it down here. I is zero. And this expression for now is not true, right? I is not greater than five. Therefore, or I'm sorry, this expression, I did this backwards. My apologies. Let's try this again. One again. As long as I is, uh, when I is greater than five, stop. We don't want that to be true. We want this to be, oops. I had that right the first time, sorry. As long as I is less than five. I wrote that right the first time, I don't know what I'm second guessing. All right, here we go. As long as I is less than five, I want you to do the things. So I is zero right now. All right, I gotta stop doing that. There we go, hello world. It prints and it goes back to the top to iterate once with the iterator. It then checks to see if I is still less than five. It is, so it's gonna jump back in. I is now one, it's gonna print it again. And it'll keep doing that over and over again until the program is finished. And the program's finished. And as you can see, hello world printed five times. But this is normally not how we use this. So let's try to use something a little real world. Let's create a list. So we're gonna create a list. We're gonna name this list cars. It's my favorite topic to talk about, cars. We're gonna initialize a new list and we're gonna fill that list with some content. So not new list, I don't wanna do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna scroll over list and I wanna import that collections library. We're gonna need it. There we go. Using systems.collections.generic, fantastic. Now we have it. Now I can use this new list. Why, why are you doing this to me? We should be fine. Why are you angry? Using the, oh, that's right. I didn't give it a, uh, a thing, string, fine. When you initialize a list, you have to give it a um, data type that it allows inside it, right? So I can't just initialize a list or an array without first telling it the data type that it needs to assume or allow to be saved within it. So we wanna save list. Now I can say new list and I can give it some values. So now I wanna give it some values. I will say Chevy, uh, Toyota, Ford, and Dodge. I should say Ram actually, because. Dodge doesn't make trucks anymore, Ram does. Fantastic. So now, instead of iterating over a meaningless thing, let's iterate over these cars. So we'll say cars, and we're going to use the iterator to index the list of cars. For now, don't think too hard about it. I'm just showing you how to use lists and to loop over them. I really want you to be familiar with the for loop. I'm using the list to familiarize yourself with the data collection list and in the future arrays. And for all intents and purposes, I want this loop to end when the list is finished. When there are no more items in the list, I want this for loop to finish. Don't run anymore. Because if the for loop tries to iterate over the list, more than what the list has inside it. So the list right now has four positions. The Chevy's in the zeroth position, Toyota's in the first position, Ford's in the second position, the Ram's in the third position. If I try to iterate to the fourth position, it will error out and say array not, you know, out of index exception because there is no fourth position in the list. So what I need to do is I need to say the name of the list, which is cars, and I need to tell it how large it is. Now, in most languages, we'd say dot length. Dot length is an array property that is used across a lot of data collections that allow us to see the immutable size of that specific data collection, that specific data structure. But lists are a little different because lists really don't act the way arrays do. So we don't say dot length, we say dot count. 
And you can see there, dot count is the name of the property that is the, is, it only has a getter, you cannot set it, it's set by the program, where you can get the actual amount of elements that are in the list. So when this translates, what's going to be here is I, while I is less than four, because that's how many positions are in this list. So once I hits four, it's going to stop iterating, which is what we want. All right, let's go ahead and let's try it again. All right, here we go. We're at our breakpoint. Our locals looks like it hasn't shown up just yet. There it is. You can see here, cars has four specific values. I'm going to see it's saying busy because it's it's kind of thinking about it. There we go. Scroll up a little bit so you can see it. All four values are in there. So when you initialize a list, you can initialize it empty and just say new list, whatever you want your data type to be, and these um, parentheses. Or if you would like to give it values, you can give it values by giving it these uh, curly braces and then putting your strings separated by commas in there. Now notice I use strings so I can use strings, but you can use any data type you desire. You can use other lists if you want. It doesn't really matter. Now, with that being said, we stopped in the for loop. Our count of cars is four. So as long as I is less than four, this is going to keep looping. And oh, by the way, I is zero. You can see here, I is zero. So when I iterate over cars, cars is going to show me that there are four cars in my list. And you can see on their side here, these are key value pairs. This on the left is the key, zero, one, two, three. This on the right are the values, Chevy, Toyota, Ford, and Ram. If I would like to retrieve the value within this list, I need to show it the key. Hey, at the number zero or at your zeroth position, give me the value that's associated with the zeroth position. And the value that's associated with the zeroth position in this list is Chevy. Now, how do I know that's what's going to pop out? Well, I is zero, which means I'm asking cars to give me the value at the zeroth position because I at this moment is zero. So it should print is Chevy, as you see there. The same is true for the next one. What should print next is Toyota. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Is Toyota. And there it is. Same thing is true for Ford. And lastly, Ram. Those are our four truck manufacturers that I decided to put inside our list. Now, question. I right now is three. When it goes up into the for loop, will it run this for loop one more time? If you want to take this code and put it inside your Visual Studio or REPL to test it out, do it now. Pause it. I'll wait for you. All right. Well, if you've tried to put that in there, then you already know the answer. And the answer is, it's not going to loop again. It's going to iterate this by one. So now it's four, right? I is four, as you see down here. And because I is four, and it's no longer less than the amount of the count cars, which is four, it's going to go directly under the for loop and finish looping altogether. And that's it. And there you go. There you have it. If you haven't liked to subscribe to this video, you are wrong. Let me know what you like and what you don't like in the comment section. I look forward to seeing more of you in the future. And as I say in all of my videos, good luck, have fun, ciao.